Hey, what's up guys? David Alex here for Ideas to Creations. Welcome to this video tutorial where we're going to be looking at uh, Expresso. Um, I'm planning on doing like a thinking particles thing and I think the best thing to do at first is to give guys a walkthrough of how Expresso works so that once you get into thinking particles you can start doing some rather complex stuff and we don't have to worry about uh, learning how Expresso works. So let's take a look at what's happening. Right now I have three Motex and currently they all say zero. So nothing really going on. And I'm going to hit play and see what happens. So here I have three numbers counting up. We have one that's counting the number of frames. Uh, we have one that's counting the number of frames. So you can see here 143. Up here we have 143. And then uh, the next one is 4.767. Wow. And that's actually these frames uh, converted to seconds. So I'm going to just pull out the calc here. And um, yeah, I'm actually going to do it. And if we go 143 divide by uh, 30, because are 30 frames per second, you get uh, 4.767. Uh, 4.766. But uh, obviously that's rounded off, so you get 4.767. And then finally, we have one that's rounded off completely to a full number where we have just four. So I'm going to hit play and you can see this count the frames, that counts the seconds, and that counts uh, seconds with decimal places. Um, this is actually pretty easy to set up and uh, should get the basics of Expresso down, renderable, you know, we have reflections, we have shadows and all that. But, you know, what, what we really want to look at is how to render this out. So... Uh, sorry, how to actually set this up in Expresso. Uh, so those who are unfamiliar, Expresso is these guys here and they are what are actually controlling this. So if this looks like gibberish to you right now, um, don't, don't worry. We're going to go through it and uh, hopefully you should be able to understand what's going on and be able to take what you learn into other stuff. So um, let's go ahead and make this counting thingy. So I'm going to go file new. And uh, we'll just go straight out and make a new mo text. And uh, I don't know, we could extrude it or something. Uh, play around here. Um, okay, so I guess we can work with this. I'll set the alignment to middle. Actually, we'll keep that. So I have my text here, and this is what I want to count. So how do I get started with um, Expresso? Uh, first thing, you create a new null object and. Um, you know, you can't really do anything here, maybe change the type, but uh, uh, what I'll do is right click the null, go to Cinema 4D Tags, and right there at the bottom you will find Expresso. Give that a click and we get the Expresso window popping up. Uh, we have a little graph here, we have your movement controls here, and that's about it. It comes out blank, so it's up to us to get to work. So this, uh, unlike other expression sort of stuff, we don't actually use code. What we use is nodes, and nodes work better because uh, you can see what's going on and uh, figure out what's, what's wrong and what's right uh, pretty quickly and easily. And it's also global, so we can control a whole scene using just one Expresso tag, like we had here, where this one tag is actually controlling these three objects, and we can always add in other stuff if we need to. Okay, so here we are in this Expresso tag and we're gonna start creating some nodes so uh, what we need first is a time node and time node basically outputs the time and uh, don't worry not 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 skipping anything we're gonna get to that so uh, there's two ways of adding nodes uh, we could right click and go new node and then there's a bunch of groups so you could go expresso and then calculate and then pick whatever you need but I don't like this system mainly because when you're adding a whole bunch of stuff uh, you have to keep right click and you know so i i tend to use the x pool section usually by default you're in x manager which shows all the nodes inside your your setup and x pool is basically all available nodes so this works a bit better for me so we go into system operators expresso and then uh we'll we'll go into general i think it's general and we have this whole bunch of stuff here but what we're interested in is time. So let's bring out time. Uh, let's drag this out here, and there we go. So 
our node has two sections. One is this side, which is the red side, which is output, which means that this node is giving out information. And then the blue side is input, which means it's receiving information. Simple enough, yes? Yes, it should be, because, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't get any simpler than that. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, how we're going to work with this mode text. How we're going to tell it the time. So in order to bring in an object into this area so that it can be used for calculation, uh, pretty straightforward, I'm sure you already figured it out, it's to grab the object, drag it in here, there we go, more text. And uh, it comes in empty because you usually have to, let's see if we can grab a corner here, there we go, uh, you usually have to add your own ports, uh, they're called ports by the way, you have to add your own input or output ports because it really depends on what you're planning to do. So. Right now we have time and it comes this side here ready to be output and we need to tell it to go to the more text. So before we start looking at um, setting up the text section, let's look at how we can use time to affect the position of this. So if you go to the blue corner there, give it a single left click, you can go to coordinates, uh, let me move this over, uh, we can go to coordinates, global position and choose global position Y. And then uh, we get a port here. This time it's on the blue side, which means Motex is going to receive information. So whatever we tie this to, global position is going to be that value. So grab this, connect it there. And I'm fairly certain this is not going to go as planned, but let's see. Play. Oh, wow, it really is working. Uh, if we zoom in here really close, you can see it's kind of moving up extremely slowly. But uh, if you go to coordinates, you can see it's moving. It's moving, but it's moving really, really slowly. But it's working, so that's pretty good. And I like how you can see here live while it's playing what's actually happening. So uh, that's pretty much how you set it up. That's how you tie it. Obviously, now we can't actually set a value here anymore because Expresso takes over. So going to unlink this. Uh, Right-click on the blue port and choose Delete Port. And now we need to tell it to refer. We need to connect it to this text here. And we can actually like drag this out. That doesn't work that way. What we need to do is find it in this menu. Now, this menu is usually easy to navigate because you have all, which is axis and transform stuff. And this is position scale and all those fancy things. And then you can go into basic properties, which is this basic section here. Coordinates is this coordinate section. Caps and rounding is this here. You know, so everything's pretty straightforward. And then object is just to output the object itself, which we'll look at a bit later. But um, uh, global matrix is to the other thing. So we have scale position stuff here in coordinates. But what we're looking for is object text. So we'll go to object properties. Down there you find text. So let's see here. Uh, object properties. Object properties and text. So basically if you look in the attributes manager, you can know exactly what you're looking for. So object properties, text. And then if we take this uh, this guy here and tie him to the time, bam, um, we can select more text here and you can see 2.4. So immediately we know uh, what's going on. Click play and we have the time. Now obviously time is rounded off to the second. So you can see here when we get to 30, because we're using 30 frames per second, you'll see that it's one. So one second and then we have uh, some in between stuff, go to 60, it's 2. So we pretty much have the first text set. So I'll move that up and we can create the next one. So the next one's going to be the rounded off one. And you notice all we've done is actually just connected that. So uh, like I said, it's pretty easy to use. So let's look at the next one, which is um, the rounded off one. Uh, should it be the rounded off one? No, let's look at the frames one. Yeah, frames should work better. So what I'll do is copy this. So we can hold down control, drag drag this down. Uh, let's see. Drag it first, then hold control. There we go. We have more text one. And we want this one to do the same. So we could drag this out here. Go to object properties, text. And we can right click and choose optimize. That sort of makes sure all the text is visible. And this time we'll tie directly because when we tie directly, we get these funny numbers. And uh, we can also move this down. I hope it's the right one. Uh, Motex one was the funny one. This was rounded off. 
uh, so no this is frames so let's just call it frames so you can know which is which and there we go it also changes the name there to frames and now we need to get the frame so obviously um, uh, frames per second is fra frames divided by seconds so if you want to get frames you have to do uh, frames per second times seconds yeah makes sense so uh, <laughs> sorry about that uh, so if you go to calculate section you have uh, math add so we bring out math add and uh, math add is actually what we're going to use to multiply so if you select math add in the attribute section function we can change this to multiply and then input one will be the time so that's really easy we can connect multiple stuff and input two uh, we kind of have two options we can either define it here in the attributes or we can add a node for it so let's look at how to do it with a node because that's pretty easy so if you go general you can get the constant node and then connect that there and in the constant we're gonna give a value of 30 which is our current frame rate and then we'll go to math multiply output and connect that to the text so I hope that has made sense uh, what we're doing basically is taking the time and then multiplying it by this constant which is 30 and if our math is correct then that should give us the number of frames so let's see if it works obviously it's not updated yet but if you go down one frame there we go we are currently frame 39 there we have 39 so click play awesome and there is our seconds so that's that's pretty cool uh, i like how it's working so um that's working out uh, i'm gonna move this down a bit and then uh let's see pause and let's make another copy so i'm gonna take more text one hold down control drag it down and then select the object and move it up and this time we're gonna round off this value so go to espresso again uh, ex espresso window or you can double click here to show it again if you closed it and we can add more stuff so we're gonna move this here and move this here and uh, okay so we take this guy here and optimize and uh, we're gonna use another set of uh, nodes here and uh, that one is actually the uh, sorry calculate absolute absolute and absolute basically rounds of stuff simple enough so gonna take this uh, object properties text and output goes there input goes to time so things gonna get a bit cluttered so we can move these here and maybe move time there or you can even make another time and just connect you know everything works out so have your absolute connected there uh, output goes to this guy so we can immediately press play and nothing's really happening and uh, that's because in the absolute uh, by default what it does is it takes a negative value and makes it positive or if the value is already positive it keeps it positive so that's not what we want what we want is to round off so if you come here to da if you select it go to data type inside the attributes changes to integer which is basically a full number there we go so zero one uh, same as this two and so on there you have your frames and uh, you're pretty much done uh, you know now it's just a matter of adding a floor adding a sky blah blah, blah and uh, textures and then you hit render and you're good to go so how about we add uh, something more interesting um, I want these guys as a group to move in the x-axis basically in this direction as their values increase so let's go ahead and do that so <laughs> it should be interesting uh, I'm gonna select the three and group objects and I want this null to move rather than uh, sort of forcing all of them to move uh, at once so I'm gonna take null one drop it in here and then just go ahead and go uh, basic uh, sorry coordinates global position and global position X and uh, okay so we have time here we have this but if you recall our time is going to come out as one point and values so we can actually use that but that's gonna be so tiny so we need to multiply it by something so we go to uh, calculate and uh, let's see math add and input one will be the time output will be global position x and it's already starting to behave now it's moving very slightly can't really see it 
and uh, over here we'll add a constant so constant constant here we are constant and we can set the constant value to be um, let's try 50 now connect this here and go back to frame 0 give it a few clicks and you'll see the constant also says 50 here so the good thing with that is that we don't have to select this to see what the input is here we can see it directly here so basically what we've told it is every second move 50 centimeters so let's see what happens now we play and looks like 50 is not strong enough it's kind of moving but ridiculously slowly let's see yeah that's 50 actually it is moving hmm it's already set to 50 right now ah that is because it's add yes ah, there we go so <laughs> we can change this to multiply and that should fix that problem there it is at zero and probably want to zoom out here we play and off it goes sluggishly so we can go to expresso choose a constant and say put to 50. so now um, we can select this to monitor this here and put play and off it goes so you can see here uh <laughs> we got something pretty cool going on uh you could add a bunch of cubes maybe say this is a timer i don't know entirely up to you um uh, one idea you could have is say have a spline and then i don't know there's lots of stuff you can do with this so let me pause this again and uh say add something else like uh let's see basic properties uh glow rotation and say heading so optimize Let's see what happens if we do that as well. I doubt it's going to be what I expect, but go. Yeah, things get a bit hairy when you use rotation. Um, so actually, we're using very high values of rotation. So what we could probably do is uh, tie this heading directly to the time. Ah, there we go. That looks a bit better. So cool. Um, that's Expresso for you for now. I uh, think this is getting a bit too long, but uh, go ahead and experiment with this, get the hang of it, um, learn what other nodes do. Uh, what you can do is select an object like Math Multiply, and over here you can right click and choose Show Help. Your help guy will pop up and explain Math Node performs Math Operation, blah, blah, blah. Go to Node and see the different functions you have. Uh, if you stay in content, you can also check out what other nodes do. There's plenty of them. You can add formulas and wow, this it's really powerful, really easy to work with. But uh, for now, I guess that's it from this video tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.